This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. The show where we uh, talk all the technology, gadgety news and things and that we found through the week with a lot of people that are very geeky in various ways. Of course, first of all with us, he's back in studio. E A E A E A. Yes. The, the, it's, it's, in the, it's, it's in the game. It's in the, game. It's in the podcast. It's in the podcast. John Tachilla, of course, uh, the gadget guru of Big Bank International Esquire. Not at EA Sports. Not at EA Sports. <laughs> no, that's a different job. That's a different title, right? <laughs> yes. Uh, how are you doing this week, sir? Pretty good. How are you? We, doing? we were just talked on Gold about how your home pod is still in the box at home. It's not in the game. Not in the game yet, but you're going to have a full report for us next week. Yes. Yeah, so and, check and us out on gold. We were and we were, you know, kind of supposing on gold about you know how great thing this week. You know, like every other, like I said, Apple podcast is obsessing over this thing lately because it's the only thing in the past three months they're going to put out. But anyways, also back with us in studio. Thank you, Penguins, for not having a game tonight for well, once. They have a game. Not a, a I got game. out of it. I, it was like three weeks in a row. <laughs> what the heck, Pittsburgh Penguins? Go somewhere else. Katie Dudas, <laughs> she is a sales and marketing uh, director over at the Scare House. Mm-hmm. Spooky, 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 spooky in spooky. Scare House <laughs> podcast <laughs> here on this network. Thank you for uh, coming back. Of course, I missed you guys. Yes. And uh, we also have a special guest. We have a great interview that's going to go up later this week on the awesome chat. Uh, We have with us Jack Morgan. He's a uh, designer over at Duolingo. You may have heard of that company uh, here in Pittsburgh. Uh, Thank you for joining us, Jack. Thanks for having me, Mike. A little background. I ran into Jack. As as a customer, when I was driving Lyft a few weeks ago, <laughs> <laughs> yep. so and uh, we correspond an email, and here you are in the studio. Yes, we mentioned this. I was covered in paint, I think, at the time. So yes. that was a good, good good first impression. Well, I, I don't even see the people in the back seat, like literally. <laughs> yep, I'm bottomless. Bad. Yeah, I could exactly. have been bottomless. Yeah, it would have been, been, been nothing. Just like people get in, especially. I don't think I want to look in the back seat at night <laughs> on the drunk nights. <laughs> right. So you know, yep. y- you never know. Um, so the things I find back there, uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, no, thank you for joining us. And we had a great discussion about, uh, uh, about Duolingo and, and what you're doing. You got an amazing backstory and coming over, uh, to the States and everything. So, uh, go check out that on the awesome chat on the feeds later this week. Uh, of course, this is the awesome cast. You can check us out at awesomecast.com. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Speaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music as well as video versions on the Awesome Cast YouTube and Facebook page, live streaming here every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern. Watch out for any events, for any other interviews we may do or other special events with the Awesome Chat. And, of course, uh, thank you to our streaming partner, RiversEdgePGH.com. We're there Saturdays at, every Saturday at 9 a.m. They replay this show for us. Also, check out, I was just there earlier today. Uh, did you know it's World Radio Day? No. It was, it, it, hey, it's World Radio yeah. Day, and apparently I was an expert panelist um, on the show. <laughs> no, much. we were talking with uh, um, uh, some real radio people, actually, on there, and had a great conversation with them uh, there. So go to uh, River's Edge uh, uh, Facebook page. The stream is up there for you to check out as well, and it should be on, I believe, on the, the River Talk uh, YouTube, I'm sorry, podcast feed uh too so you can check that out here eventually and also a big thanks to the 405 media.com also carrying the show and replaying the show um every weekday at 9 a.m pacific time that's new noon eastern for you guys here in the pittsburgh area and in the eastern uh coast of course and of course thank you to our patreon supporters matt weller at the coffee club five dollar level he's going to hear us go go on and on about speaker quality on the gold this week as <laughs> part of his patreon level and also thank you to michael fedor uh, uh mike fedor show on the twitter his brother actually joined us over on 
Wrestling Mayhem show last week. Uh, he's a pro, a pro wrestling referee uh, that we had, had in here. So both both of them have been on shows um, um, on this network. So thank you so much to those guys for uh, supporting and being a part of the network too. You guys can support the show, patreon.com slash awesomecast. It literally helps us keep the lights on here in the studio. It's more than just the basement. So it takes a little bit more to do that. Of course, like I said, the coffee club level gets the gold level. Uh, the uh, $10 level is the, you get you get a, a state of the show and get a little more input in the show. And of course, our executive producer level where you get business cards. And you can officially credit yourself as an executive producer on the show. Put that on your LinkedIn profile. Really impress your friends and the bots, please. <laughs> uh, and so let's get into our, and I just read one of them for the first time, uh, our awesome things of the week. Chilla, okay, Chilla, I think we got, actually, it looks like we've got a couple fun things right now. But I have to, sh- I, I have to get into this. I actually just found this in my email probably about an hour before the show. But it's, it's fresh off the press. It's fresh off the digital press, which means from a day ago because my Engadget newsletter. Um, but this is a Hasbro's new AR helmet uh, puts you inside Iron Man's armor. So you got the hand pulser thing you put on. You got the uh, the, the, the the the. I just noticed because I was like, why does this look weird? And I realized that's the phone I see in the eyes. Yes. Um, so it, it's. It's Google Cardboard, or you know, I love that we kind of made fun of the uh, the one thing, the cardboard AR thing a few few weeks ago, and now here's everybody else's version of that that we found every week since. And it's interesting too because they're it's not doing the uh, Gear VR version where you can't see out the other side. This is another one of those AR type events like we were we watched the one with the what was a dodge like a dodgeball type yeah yeah game. like a like dodgeball kind of anime like i'm dragon it's like dragon ball z dodgeball i forget the name of it we talked about last week right that sounds amazing <laughs> it, yeah. it looks well, like a lot who, of fun. nobody's told me about this yes <laughs> especially n- you guys haven't either which is i'm just hearing about it now yeah. <laughs> right and this, Furious. it's big in korea apparently yes okay. there, there's like a it's like an olympic type event yeah right? yeah it's a co- competition but anyways <laughs> So this reminded me a lot of that because they're not doing the closed VR type effect. They're doing, if you scroll down a little bit further on the page, uh, a little bit further, a little bit further, right there. Um, And stop. So this is, this is a view again, using that, the camera on your iPhone, it's like, you know, what you, you, well, I guess you kind of look at Tony Stark's face in the movies, right? But it, this is the other side. This is the this is what Tony Stark with the heads sees up display. You see, HUD. you see yeah. your room, and then you see other things floating around that you need to shoot at. And it's using it's using something on that piece that straps onto your hand. Did you see on the one on the on the one side of the hand strap? It kind of had a weird black and white pattern to it. Um, it's and I'm guessing there's one on the back of it as well that's a little bit different Mm -hmm. it's using that to help track your hand movement so it can then overlay tony stark's gauntlet over your hand oh wait when your hand comes into view let me go back to the other picture now because yeah if you see that so that's your hand is covering it with the rest of your hand with or, or at least is skinning your hand with iron man armor right yes that's interesting. And then it takes the room and it sounds from what I was reading, you can put it in kind of like a battle mode where different things come around the room and you have to blow them up and you have to take out um, all these different objectives. Or you can kind of put it in free for all mode where there's no there's no uh, nothing to battle, but you're just more blowing up stuff around the room. Mm-hmm. So that, I think it's a really neat concept. The one thing I didn't see in the, the article I had seen, and maybe it's in here, how much does this cost me? How much is this going to set me back? Mm-hmm. And will it fit on my head, or is this just for kids? It'll be interesting because this is, you know, I've talked a little bit about like how much VR and AR there is right now. If you in the VR helmet section at Walmart, which everything I think maxes out at. Oh, by the way, a lot of it's on clearance. 
So now if you go to the clearance uh, at, our, at the Carnegie one, like, you know, back by the shoes, between the shoes and the crafts, there's like just clearance rack. <laughs> and, 838. And, and, <laughs> exactly. Check it on your app. Get the L13. Um, <laughs> by the bathrooms and layaway. Uh, but anyways, but yeah, so a lot of those, of course, are on clearance because there was a stack of them because they were gr- going to be great stocking stuffers or, well, I'm not getting, to, getting you an Oculus, so here's this thing. But a lot of those, I think, had a similar concept where you get them in one had like a virtual ar dinosaur game and and this one called cube that has these these things and you you put them on the table and you interact with them right so like this is just kind of the licensed version of that and i don't expect this to be amazing what's and it's it's a 50 dollar item it's it's it falls under the child what is it coppa child children's online privacy protection act so it's it's okay for kids under 13 mm-hmm. um until we find some strange leak in the app or something but yeah, you're you're yeah. but i i think one of the problems too is with something at the oculus caliber if you have more than one kid that means you need more than one oculus right right <laughs> versus like everybody can be iron man yeah it was just like no your war machine and then new arguments start yes so so i think i think it opens it up to more people i think it also is a good bridge to the person that you're buying this for, are they going to be interested in it? Is this going to be something they put down after, after 20 minutes and never play again? Um, yeah. is that, that's a, that's a deep investment to make. In and I'm looking, I'm looking at this. So as you know, the phone display, it's own custom, uh, HUD. So kids can feel like kids, right? <laughs> kids. Um, everyone in this room probably yes. actually, <laughs> what, so. what I'll be interested in is, is how quickly can someone adapt the little black and white pattern thing mm-hmm. that I can put that in any viewer and then use their app. Like how are they actually keeping you to buy? Well, I, the, the, the thing that that pattern shows up has to be programmed in the app, right? Right. So, so the content some... has to be in the app. You can't add some other visual to it, but you can, you can mimic that pattern, put it on other things. So if that pattern means that, you know, Evil Iron Man shows up or something, you can put him then anywhere, right? Well, that and I'm wondering is if I tape, like if I have, I already have another headset, can I just put my phone in it and tape that pattern to the back and front of my hand and now yeah, I'm good to go? probably. Um, you can probably replace it with a Google Cardboard pretty easily at this point. You know, just yeah. cut out a hole in the, in the Google Cardboard. So, yes. Um, so... Katie, what the <laughs> heck am I looking at here? <laughs> I just see no, no, no cat, <laughs> and 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 what 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 new? Uh, what the heck is happening with no, no, no cat? <laughs> I, I get a lot of my articles and things from TechCrunch. Mm. It's a lot of quick things, quick, get through quick things quickly. And I was I pulled up TechCrunch, and one of the ads was <laughs> no, no, no cat. Um, if you're not familiar with no, no, no cat, it just kind of goes no, 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 which is one of my favorite internet cats ever. And I use that a lot and people a mm-hmm. lot of times don't understand what I'm talking about. Like, or or don't. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a sponsored post in my tech crunch. It's not like a Google ad that has popped up along in the corners or anywhere else. So it looks like no, no, no cat has paid to be on TechCrunch. <laughs> and, uh, and I guess that they think we're cat lovers here. Sponsored by TechCrunch. Yeah. So I'm not even sure what's happening here because it's not even it's, it's like so is TechCrunch getting in with no, no, no cat. Like what's happening? Yeah. Here? Yeah. Like, like who's who's the who's the prevailing property here? Right. Has TechCrunch <laughs> paid them for this? What's I going? don't know. And then if you click on it, it goes to the no, no, no cat YouTube page, <laughs> which is not in English at all because no, no, no cat's not from america he's from russia i think <laughs> damn it those russians getting in our Get social her. media again <laughs> and their cats implementing my life infiltrating my life with their no 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 cat but yeah it was just the most random thing i was like why is no 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 cat sponsored on my tech crunch <laughs> awesome that made my day <laughs> uh chilla you have a uh, uh, speaking of ar vr you got something else that's going on and it's weird because cat is also in <laughs> yes this um so it, much cat. it's rift cat it's rift cat yeah so i i saw this article today and it was it was about how to use and it was talking about the a desktop vr app that's available in S- steam vr Ooh. with your uh 
Samsung Galaxy or Gear VR. And it was an inter- it's a very interesting setup. So if you go to riftcat.com, there's a nice video that demonstrates it right off the right, out right the off the hook. Wow. Um so what this does is it takes and there's a there's a there's an app that you have to load to your desktop. Um it does recom- it, the minimum requirements are Windows 8.1 and Windows 7. Um, they recommend Windows 10, an i5 processor, 8 gig of RAM, a semi-decent video card, um, blah, 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 blah. But what this lets you do is it lets you take anything that's on your computer screen and put it in a Gear VR or Google Cardboard type experience. And it out of the box supports Steam VR. There's Oculus Rift support with Revive. And they have a link right on their website to the GitHub information. Um, supports additional controllers, sound streaming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you can test it out free, and it'll work for ten minutes per session. Um, it's fifteen euros, so I don't know how much that is in do, American dollars. Do, do you happen to have a conversion rate for us? I keep, I keep, yeah, I keep them all in my wallet. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what, what's just a the, list. What's, what's going right? I'm trying to pay for something in a CVS with croons or some other <laughs> strange currency, some intergalactic currency. Uh, I don't know. It's probably, what did you say? It was 14 euros, 15 euros? 15 euros. Yeah, yeah. I know. It's probably more than 20 bucks. Okay. Like 20, okay. 20 that's not bad. That's not bad. For, 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 Usually okay. I'll use Google, but I figured, you know. <laughs> but but I, I don't know. I thought it was, I, I thought this was another interesting thing, like, and I really don't want to invest in a new PC and the Oculus right, Rift right, equipment right. unless I know I'm going to be really into it. And, really and the experience want isn't going to gonna be it. awesome, but you know, because there, I mean, there is a, a, a it's not going to be full quality. It's not going to be full quality. But my my point of view on this is, I'd rather spend fifteen dollars and figure out if I really want an oculus rift Mm -hmm. versus spending all of that money and then have it sit on a shelf but is this really a good comparison point or or you're saying i okay i want to see that game but i want to see that game look better than it already does exactly okay okay or or i want to see that game and i want to see will i use this thing more than more than the once gimmick usage yeah kind of thing yeah. that's that's where i think it's interesting <clears throat> the interesting thing I, I and i'm interested i i was reading some of the reviews and people having pretty good experiences with it even being wireless so when you think about it it's obviously streaming over your network um everyone recommends five gigahertz um high speed wi-fi around your house they do kind of tell you how to um, some of the articles I was reading about it tell you, you know, you can buy this cable and you can actually plug in your uh, Android device to an Ethernet cable. Obviously, then you're tethered to your home router or whatever you're plugged into um, if you can't get the speeds out of it. But what I, what I thought was neat with it, too, was that it was all Wi-Fi based. And this so is all and this is all wireless. Android only, right? This is all Android only. So you download um, the Riftcat app. It's V Ridge on your phone. Then you download the app on your your PC, and then you can download things like uh, Steam VR or the Oculus Rift uh, application. And then you can use this to make your Gear VR or Google Cardboard um, or compatible with those those setups. So I thought, awesome. I thought it was pretty cool. That's cool. It's kind of accessible, and uh, but you, you do have to have a pretty. I mean, you may you may have to have the computer that's already kind of ready for VR because it's going to be pushing a, a lot uh, through that, and, and and that'll if that doesn't if that doesn't meet those specs, then you're going to have a odd throw uppy experience probably. So, but it's the biggest difference, uh, Jack. So, I, I, so I, I, was, I was wondering, I know you didn't have anything kind of coming in here because I kind of dropped this on you. Yes. Uh, but it, have you been inspired by any awesome things uh, that you might want to share? Does this have to be hardware based? No, 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 no. Right. So one. The, 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 hers was, was no, no, cat. no cat. <laughs> yours, to be fair, yes, yours was. Um, 
the best internet cat. And that was more politics than anything, isn't it? The Russians <laughs> again. So. Yeah, sorry to meet him in politics. The last step in their master plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it affects the uh, the six people in this room and uh, nobody else, apparently. Um <laughs> So I watched, this, uh, I'm, I'm not in the habit of, uh, <laughs> I'd say I have to say this on the show now, I'm not in the habit of watching uh, TV at work. Uh, I don't think anybody is. But one thing I did do, I have two monitors, and one of the things I set up on the, that came up on my feed was uh, a Wired documentary on uh, Shenzhen in China, the city in China that uh, used to be a small uh, fishing village and is now this massive uh, city with 10 million plus people in it. Um, and they are the... Um, they're at the the very forefront of hardware right now. So all of the phone hardware and all of the VR hardware and uh, everything Apple and and and, uh, and and other hardware manufacturers are focusing on right now comes out of Shenzhen, and it's fantastic. You, you they, they, the wide documentary on YouTube for free takes you through uh, all of the the markets there and shows you people building iPhones basically from scratch from spare parts. Uh, and these are people that taught themselves how to build these phones. They didn't used to work for Apple. They just have gotten the parts and tried building phones over and over again. They build them from individual pieces and then do the laser engraving on the back exactly to match what is shipping from Apple and even place real Apple logos in there made of, you know, made of all the exact same materials. And you said and this is a, so. a wired document. It's documentary? a wired documentary. Yeah, it's an hour long, I think. Might and be more than an hour long. It's on it's on Wired UK's uh, uh, YouTube page, and uh, and we we talked about like the guy that went and I don't know if it was in it might have been in Beijing or yeah. Shanghai or something built his own phone built his own phone from these markets uh, his own iPhone and even to the point where like he had to get a cord kind of uh, a, I'm sorry a a, a a circuit board like, yep. like laser cut uh, in a specific way so for the boards and everything. And uh, yeah, no, I completely believe because this was this exists in Thailand too to a certain point. Mm-hmm. Um, not not as in depth of probably all, all of the components, but there's definitely a very eh, shady looking cell phone market in everything that I <laughs> I was at. Sure. So uh, you know, including like, oh, I'm going to the mall. That means it's not going to be like weird, uh, you know, outposty stuff. Not yep. completely was it was <laughs> yeah. weird, uh, but <laughs> not a mall that you think of, right? But uh, no, that's awesome. That's definitely going to have to bookmark that to check that out later. So, um, Wired UK. That's awesome. Thanks a lot for that. I tried. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, no, no cat. It's, it's, it's no, 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 well, no, no, no cat I mean, I mean, what is? <laughs> Very let's little. Let's be honest. So, well, you know, I know something Katie won't say no, no, no to. That's, that sounds like a horrible segue. <laughs> Thank apologize. you. apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Hey. hey, Slice on Broadway, our good friends right up the street, <laughs> supporting Pittsburgh pos- podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Uh, Fee and our guests here today, hooking us up. Uh, we got a random steak hoagie today. Uh, we check out some different flavors. Of course, they also supported the uh, Bull Pittsburgh uh, brunch here a couple weeks ago, and uh, that was that was really awesome of them. Uh, they're right here, right up the tracks at a Beachview Original, just like us um and as well as carnegie pa pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates as well as east liberty right down the street from duolingo i believe so uh go check them out it's awesome it's uh they've been their multiple time best pizza in pittsburgh and uh and i know a lot of people check it out when they come here to any of these neighborhoods and always always expanding always really cool to us thank you so so much to them pgh underscore slice on the twitter slice on broadway on the instagram on facebook let them know the awesome cast sent you. Brandon out in the KC, um, Kansas City, shares us an article uh, from this past week. Um, awesome ish, I'll say. It, it seems that uh, Best Buy will stop selling CDs as digital music revenue continues to grow. Um, and I think Target is only going to sell music CDs under a consignment basis, is the subheadline here over on The Verge. Uh, and I know I, I, you know, again, kind of went by a, a, as I was looking at my VR clearance items at Walmart, I did notice that how, how small the CD rack had gotten there. Like it's a quarter of an aisle <laughs> over by photos. Like the thing where the, like you go find the random SD cards and and, and batteries, right? You know, it, it's just uh, the well, forgotten in the corner thing. When you right? said photos, I thought you were talking about photo development. I was like, yeah, they put it in exactly the right place. It's right next to the Kodak stand where you take and get film developed. No, it so. is actually. Oh, it is. No, That's it is. what you meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the, the, the perfect. The, yeah, the stand back there where they they actually still have film development yep. people there. There's kiosks, but there are people there that handle those. So I think they still do. They're not photo. holograms. They're real people, right? I think I don't know. I'm cardboard gonna, cutouts. I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna 
poke random Walmart employees. <laughs> but uh, Again. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, except for that one time. Uh, but anyways, I, but no, it's so, I mean... Is it our CDs kind of becoming the vinyl thing? Or also, will people collect CDs the way they have vinyls? <laughs> I know I've seen a few people with their giant stacks yeah. of CDs they've gotten from the exchange for probably a buck a piece. Mm-hmm. And that seems like the only way you want to. And of course, you're going to rip them and throw them into your iTunes or something anyways, right? It's really funny because I think back, I opened a Best Buy years ago mm-hmm. and, and putting all of those CDs, they just come in boxes and sorting them and figuring out which section was where. And it was my nightmare for the longest time. And now it's like, oh, yeah, they're not even a thing anymore. I do enjoy mixed CDs. I like finding mixed CDs because they're like time capsules mm-hmm. to me. Because I knew exactly what I was doing when I heard this song yes. and what time of year it was. And it's so I do enjoy my mixed CDs. But. It kind of leads to, I, I, you know, as I'm kind of figuring out what to do with the old studio space now that we've moved in here and kind of settled in a little more, I know, like seven months later. Um, but uh, I, so so I've moved all my old video games with a tube TV and I'm now, instead of them being other places in the house, I've taken all my stacks of CDs, all my DVDs. Mm-hmm. Yes, I still have some VHSs. Not that I wash them, but it's like, you. I mean... You gave me your VCR. I don't know how I you did can get, watch them. I have two more VCRs. <laughs> um, <laughs> when there was the last line of VCRs at Walmart, I grabbed like three of them. Because at the time, I was trying to duplicate some things into digital. The WWE Network happened, and I didn't need to. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, didn't I give you all my old pay-per-view tapes yes, or something? Yes, I have those. Like the ones that I recorded and mm-hmm. everything. Your so handwriting I, it's super cute. Yes, like, it's horrible. Um, so, so you should basically, only be watching WrestleMania on VHS now, anyway, right? I so know, right? You know, it's the only way to watch it, as <laughs> you know, as you were used to, right? Yes, I mean, yes, uh, over and over again with that one part that glitched because it ate the tape that one time, right? <laughs> or, or, or things like that. Uh, you know, it, it's it's kind of my ode to old technology. I even threw my old 2007 iMac in there. I'm like, well, I can put Steam and Doom on here. We're good, right? Nice. You know, it, so course. it's just my old. I want to live in 10 years ago <laughs> with all my physical media yep. it's all confined to one room and it's kind of a celebration of history for me and it's just my kind of chill room i need to get a nice gaming chair and stuff like that's my vision of my my entertainment center future all the high technology is here at the studio i go home and settle back into 1992 so where it's comfortable yeah where it's comfortable with and... you you put a denim jacket on as you walk <laughs> through the door light a cigarette sit down perfect but what's happening with CDs is not uh, that that doesn't seem to be happening as quickly with DVDs, right? Despite the whole Netflix originals thing and, and streaming well, and, and Blu-rays, I guess more, right? I mean, right. I think it is no, not as quickly. Because, Slower, yeah. Well, I think I think because we're still at that point where we talked about a lot of WWE Network. Mm-hmm. Why would you buy anything else? Like, but they still put out them on DVDs. They still release DVDs. They put out the pay per views in like now two packs at Walmart of, of pay per views a couple months later. Um, there is still a certain section of America that doesn't have the bandwidth to do a sure. Netflix and a WWE Network. So, whereas music seems a little more accessible, right? Uh, or you just get your CD off off Amazon mm-hmm. at this point. Uh, so, so I think they're still serving a shrinking portion of, you know, a market, you know, based on our internet capabilities in certain areas here. Yeah. I walked into a target the other day and, um, I saw Blade Runner was the first, just like a whole stack of uh, DVDs for Blade Runner 2049, the the new Blade Runner. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and I, I was about to go see it in theaters that day and it was, I was ending its theater run. And I don't know about you guys, but this is um, this is a relatively new thing that they're releasing DVDs this quickly, right? I mean, it, it hadn't yeah. it hadn't mm-hmm. left theaters yet, and they were like, "It's on DVD, you can buy." I it. think officially it used to be a ninety day window or something like that, and 90, now yeah. and now you can okay. find it because you know I'm going through the Movie Pass app, and and again, like we, I mean, we saw Kingsman the sequel like probably two weeks before the DVD, right? So it, that's been kind of an interesting thing that's happening too. But it's just it's all kind of falling together. You know, it's not you're waiting six months a year before that uh, home version, uh, you know, anymore. So Bobby Cherry found it odd that the uh, Fuller House came out on DVD maybe a year after it was released on Netflix. Seems so weird. Well, there's a lot of that, too, because I think I think House of Cards is on DVD. Uh, technically, House of Cards was um, um, distributed by Netflix, but the, the, the rights to it actually belonged to, to another company, which distributed it elsewhere. Didn't, it just, didn't they distribute it to, like, Comcast on demand. Yeah, and some, yeah, like, like cable channel like they, on demand. Like they're selling like stuff. in syndication kind of style yeah. to other other formats. Uh, and 
a lot of the Daredevil, like a lot of the Marvel Netflix series are mm-hmm. on there. Because there's some people, again, that that's like the WWE Network thing. You're serving those people that literally cannot use Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. Or uh, we do we deal with this with the wrestling production all the time. Like there's like guys, we have it on digital download. We can get it on video video on demand. It is half the price, if not a quarter of the price, of me handing you a physical DVD that's lesser quality. Mm-hmm. And they're like, I want a DVD to put on my shelf. There's mm. still people that do want. I still buy Blu-rays of movies with digital downloads, so I have that backup. To be quite honest, yeah, I do that with it's not the same thing, but I do it with books. I still buy physical books after buying the. Oh, I'm version. over digital books. In fact, I'm looking to get rid of my com- like my comic like histor- history of comic books at this point. The physical comic, the books. physical ones, like that. I'm starting to detach from them. I'm like, mm. you know what? I'm sure I can find it online. There's no, uh, you're not romantic about the uh, turning the pages, smelling the comic book when you get it. You they know, the smell whole... musty. <laughs> okay? Let's be honest yeah, I should, about this. I should have, I My right iPad doesn't. Okay. And it's not like I properly bagged and bored these. <laughs> Push up the glasses. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's just one of those things, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of just, in, I mean, it's going to be embarrassing because all my mom let me buy was the, uh, Get Along Gang and Care Bears comic books for the longest time, but uh, you know, I, I don't have I don't have the cool Spider Man ones from that that age. I was picturing uh, the Spider Man ones, not the Care Bear ones. So I do have Spider Ham. Spider Ham. Spider Ham. It was it was just Spider Man, <laughs> but they're all animals. Perfect. Right. Yes. Yeah. So. I can't figure out why that didn't catch on. I know, right? It kind of came back-ish. They did the Spider Universe, and there was more of that. But uh, anyways, uh, moving on. Uh, Chris <laughs> Whalash also called out that Crystal Dynamics, who um, I remember them affectionately for the Gex game on the 3DO, CDI, and PlayStation. Um, they are actually going to be taking on uh, the Avengers next. And also, they I think they're the ones that reinvented Tomb Raider. Uh, to the point where the new movie will look exactly like the game, apparently. Um, and uh, yeah, they're taking on the Avengers, so kind of excited about that. Uh, Chilla, Chilla, you're, you're not, you, you know, no, more than that. This is the, the game will be making its way to PlayStation Four. Oh, he's an Xbox guy, so am I. So then it says, although blah, blah blah blah, at this moment the details of other platforms have not been made official. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and this bums me out too because. It's like one of those things, right? You buy the Switch just so you can get the old school Nintendo game catalog. Mm-hmm. Like now it's like, do I buy the PS4 so I can get the really cool Spider-Man game and now the really cool Avengers game? I hope they start making these cross platforms. Yeah, that's going to be that's going to be tough. Uh, and also Missy shared this and I was really excited when I saw this. Now listen, I I've, I've, I've tried watching an episode of My Little Pony. And I didn't really catch on for me. I kind of understand why bronies are a thing, right? I, I talked to a brony at the Gathering of Juggalos. That was fun. Uh, as you do. Yes. But, as you do. As you do. Um, but there is a video game coming out. Um, this is not officially... Oh, apparently they slapped a cease and desist order on this game already. So if you see where this <laughs> is going, it's called Them Fighting Herds. Them's fighting herds. Like and it's, them's fighting words? Yes, but herds as in herds of ponies. And it's an animated Street Fighter-esque game with My Little Pony looking characters. Please, Hasbro, leave them alone. Because this <laughs> thing needs to exist right now. <laughs> uh, it, it, it's apparently done. They had an Indiegogo it was being put out as part of Humble Bundle, which is a great way to get a bunch of games that I will never get time to play uh, for charity. And uh, while well, there's actually like a little bit of an overhead kind of mini game kind of thing going on there. Uh, so them's fighting herds. Keep an eye on for that. Hopefully if uh, if uh, Hasbro does not have their way, uh, we can you can get that. Uh, it, it, it's uh, finally coming out for PC uh february 22nd according to a new trailer released earlier this week that i think that was part of what we were just looking at it's a 2d fighter guys it's a it's a very it looks like my little pony it's that flat 2d kind of effect to it uh so in a very street fighter-esque so uh it looks pretty cool all right guys want to give a shout out real quick uh of course you know i was hanging out in millville today and uh hearing a little bit about some of the plans coming up for the millville music festival i know i always miss this because i'm always traveling but but i hear i've seen the footage edited some of the footage this thing takes over millville you guys it's may 12th 
Uh, it's a Saturday, and, and they have how many stages are there, Missy? Uh, what, what were they last year? What are they, what's expected over there? Just hold up a number; it's fine. You, <laughs> I think I think we had um, like twenty some stages last year, if I recall correctly. Mm-hmm. It was just about every bar in Millvale. Yeah, we also had some built stages out so, and outdoor venues, and we had 120 bands last year. This year, we're aiming for 150. <sighs> To commemorate the 150th anniversary of Millvale as a borough. Nice, nice. A really cool thing that's happening there. Um, I, I, is it, this has to be one of the biggest festivals in the area at this point, right? Uh, it's on par with some of the other bigger festivals, like uh, Deutschtown, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a different model than Deutschtown. But it's it's pretty awesome as far as it's concerned, and this is going to be our second year. Mm-hmm. So year one was getting bigger and better. Year one exceeded our expectations on things. Uh, put a little more weight on our shoulders for year two, but I, I think we're hitting it in stride as far as planning is concerned, and mm-hmm. get a lot going on. Especially right now, I'm I'm going to pimp this since we're we're talking about it. There is in addition to the musicians and the stages, this year we are adding visual artists. Ooh. So if you are a painter, a sculptor, a jewelry maker, you know, clothing, anything along those lines with textiles or, or something not music art related, uh, the website, they're currently accepting submissions for those. And we're going to be making a determination in mid-March on who's going to have some tables and booths set up for that so thanks go check it out at millvillemusic.org for updates and check out the uh we're gonna go millville uh music minute uh where they, they give you updates about the fest uh, going into it katie tell me about this thing that's going to kill me there's, uh, there's a lot of things on the camera. oh the one the one that wants to open the door for me before it kills me oh my gosh the robot and by the way i just watched that one episode of black mirror from this yeah. season that really scares <laughs> yes. the crap out of me and then i see this the next day now you know you can't beat it so yeah yeah exactly <laughs> But how, look how polite it was. It's the Boston Dynamics Spot Mini Robot. Mm-hmm. And just watching it open the door for the other robot was very cute. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a dog. And yeah, it it's looks essentially a dog. Scary, With elbows. Scary like the, the killer robot from the Black Mirror mm-hmm. episode, which I don't know what the point of that was other than just mayhem. Oh, there, here, here comes another one. Here comes another one. And this one has a little arm. Oh, that's scary as hell. Yeah, watch it. Watch it. Opens the door so politely. It's opening the door. It's and opening the door. I think it the best part. It, wait for it. That's mm-hmm. not even the best part. Wait for it. It's wait waiting. For it. It's oh, wait. pulling it's, it open it's, to his little The arm, arm goes around the door now and he's pulling it out. And then, polite. Let the other robot through. Let's it through and closes the door behind behind it. Yep. If only I could teach my dog and cat to do this. Yep. Um, That is not great. It's amazing. (laughs) Oh, no. There's one of one climbing stairs. I don't want to see that. That's going to be nightmare inducing. (laughs) I I, The Black Mirror twist is going to be that the the robot with the arm hates the robot without the arm. And it has to open doors (laughs) for it for all eternity. (laughs) You again. You again. <laughs> there we go. Uh, We're on the same page. Ah, uh, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so. interesting because this is like the this article from Wired was, I didn't think of it this way, but it's kind of a different direction because humanoid robots are just worthless. They fall over, they do stupid things, and then these four-legged kind of walking they're oh, able to balance themselves. Those almost, are the ones you have to watch out for, not the creepy too ones. efficient, yes. aren't they? They yes. do somersaults. Did you see that one? There's a no. link at the bottom of that article. Uh, it's the which uh, Atlas robot does a backflip. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Yep, it's um, the future. <laughs> <laughs> Chilla, tell me about progressive web apps and why this matters to me, the regular, um, a regular app user. As, so, so I was I was here. I've been hearing more and more about progressive web apps. I heard. A, there were a lot of articles on like code camps and stuff towards the end of last year talking about, you know, will they replace regular apps in Android today? You can take if if the website has enabled kind of their website as a progressive web app, you can actually download it on Android as kind of like an icon or whatnot on your on your phone. Uh, let's uh, roll this back. So web apps, you know, that is kind of. When the first iPhone came out, it was kind of the pitch that that's how you would get your application and functionality. Yes. There wasn't an app store, right? And these things still exist. Some people, some some use them. Uh, you, you you save them as an app on on your home screen. It opens up, kind of full screen, kind of full featured, but it's basically a web page running off a server, right? 
So what is the progressive what part of What makes these a little different are they can integrate with things like notifications. So Twitter has made mobile.twitter.com. It has, it has the additional bits and pieces. On a phone. On a phone. On a phone. Now this is, and this is and different than notifications on Chrome that websites keep bugging me for. Correct. Okay. Um, think of like APNS and, and things where the, like that. Apple push notifications. Service. Okay. When okay. you get when you get the notification from Facebook that right. someone did a friend request or whatever, right, right, it can right. trigger those through that progressive web app. The progressive web app actually has multiple parts that actually get then installed on the device, whether it be Android, probably sooner or later into Chrome, um, Windows, Redstone Force. So the next version of Windows will have support for this. Windows ten. Okay whatever it's still 10 but they're, they're still yeah. code naming like the releases yeah. okay um the we next, haven't had that discussion for a while yeah. so um it'll be built into edge the edge and internet explorer browsers apple has hinted or put in release notes about ios 11.3 that the safari browser will support uh progressive web apps um what this allows you to do is it to your point it gives you that full screen app looking experience it does give you offline capability. It does give you notification capability. So if you think of Twitter, right? If you want, wanted to launch Twitter and see what your feed was and you have a Wi-Fi device, you could see what the last iteration of that feed is without connectivity. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it's up to the developer what they how they actually make it work um, and what it can do and how it integrates with uh, the device. It can integrate with the camera. The interesting, the, the, the reason that I find this interesting too is because you, as a user, I don't have to worry as much about it trying to hack or grab data off the device because it has a very limited amount of access to low level device capabilities. Um, so I just, I just think it's a really interesting way to get the apps out there where I really think that Microsoft's going to make out on this is they've been crawling the internet with the Bing crawler to look at all of the different progressive web apps that are out there, finding the ones um, that are kind of the best of the best, use additional, the, the, the more high-end pieces of the progressive web app, then they're converting them and putting them right in their store. Mm -hmm. So when you think about the, when I think Microsoft's app store, I don't think quality. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's been it's been a mixed bag. We because I have like how do I how do I convert something to an MP3? I was like, oh, I just find something in the App Store and realize, well, that's not an answer. That's not as confident as saying go to the Mac App Store, or go to the, even the Android App Store or the, or the iPhone App Store. It's just, it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They had a lot of trouble incentivizing people, didn't they, to to make um, Windows apps? Yes. They yeah. Just, it's been it's been a barren for for as long as it's been out really. and, and a lot of the stuff that's in there it's like they know you're going to be looking for app xyz from android so mm -hmm. we'll make like the, the knockoff that really doesn't yeah, work yeah, we yeah, can charge yeah. you a dollar for it because you really want it because yeah. you had it on android or, or you thing. download the dropbox app and realize it doesn't really do anything yes you know it, it's <laughs> not actually it's more just i think it was maybe the dropbox web page and you could sync files but they weren't really like in a folder somewhere. It was real weird and sandboxed. Yeah. So yeah, there's a weird trickery that happens there that I'm not crazy about. So, so I think it will be interesting. And I, and I feel like it also gives people less friction to installing the app. And Google's kind of talked about this in the past where, you know, if you see an app on a website, like if I go to open table, right? it can actually start kind of streaming the bits and pieces that I need right away. Mm -hmm. And I can start using the app before it's all the way there. I think this you helps. You could say progressively. Story. Progre yes, progressively. Um, so I, I just thought it was a really interesting way to get more apps into the Microsoft store that are meaningful and tied back to legitimate services like Twitter um, without Twitter having to go way out of the way to create an app just for for microsoft and then Windows. ideally build once deploy everywhere right build i mean once. that's we've heard this promise 
Yes. A lot of times in, in development. Yep. Uh, so to see Google's Google's behind this too. Over, so yeah. if you've ever heard of coding in what is it, Angular JavaScript, that's one of the Angular JavaScript. That's a thing. That's a thing. Angular. I yeah. wasn't. I wasn't good with upfront JavaScript. So. <laughs> <laughs> so so there was um, so that's one of the I think the ways to code for mm-hmm. for PWAs. So there you go. Wow. Well, we'll see. We'll see if anything comes out from that. Uh, well, speaking of Google, wow, you got a couple Google things here over here, don't you, Katie? All the Googles. You can go and pick one you want to talk oh, about. Let's talk about. Um, I'm more interested in the the smart reply for the chat apps. Okay, that's exciting. Um, so Google's AI, their their research and development's working on an AI to answer, essentially, give you a smart reply to all of your chat apps, including Hangouts. Uh, the couple of examples they give, like someone asks them, are you at a restaurant? Yes. Yes, I am here. Yes, I am indeed. So you're able to give them answers without having to actual give real answers. And I love the, Alex, when will you be home? And it gives you the option to tell them 13 <laughs> minutes because, you know, Google knows where you're at and how far away you are from home. <laughs> but um, it's just an Android thing right now. But it, it's going to it's going to be an Android thing first. But it's, it's interesting. They're looking for like Hangouts, Allo, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Android Messages, Skype, Twitter DMs, and Slack. So I don't even have to talk to people on Slack on anymore. I have my <laughs> phone talk to you. <laughs> I just want to know what kind of answers it'll give for some of the questions. Oh, no. Yeah, like, hey, are you going to be on the show tonight? I'll be there in 13 minutes. What? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not right. <laughs> It'd be interesting if you could put it in like total AI mode where you just uh, just answer for me because yes. I want to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That could be weird. But, but then is the inevitable having the AIs talk to each other. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, you end up having a fight with, with, with your spouse. Because you both turned on your AI app and you're like, what do you mean? It, it, you weren't at the thing. It said you'll be home in 13 minutes. It's two hours later, you know, and just going on and deeper and deeper into the hole, right? So looks like it's a while off, which makes me sad. <laughs> I want it now. I want my phone to talk to people. And, and for it's me. also, it is saying like which of the chat apps is going to go in of the many, many Google has? All of them. All of them. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe that when I see it, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, it's saying Hangouts, it's saying messages mm-hmm. and, and things like that. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. You can have it reply while you're driving. Do not disturb mode. There's a vacation responder. Check your calendar on your behalf to tell people if you're not working. I received my <laughs> first um, do not disturb in the car response. Oh, yeah. Um, I, my friend Will was coming over to the studio uh, uh, last week. And I was texting him. And he was like, hey, what's up? You know, because I think he was running late or, or something or I wanted to check on something. And I got it. And it was just like, it was kind of cool. I, I can't remember what the message said, but you know, it went and it, it said that you know the message would would explain that what it was and they give you a paragraph, didn't they? Yeah, they do. It, yeah. It's a pretty significant one, and and that it will you know he'll receive the message when he's done driving. Yes, it's weird to text a friend and have it uh, have a message come back that says like William Smith is driving right now, mm-hmm. yes. and you're like whoa, and then it says at the end you can you can kind of break through that. Uh, do not disturb mode if you want. If you reply with urgent, it sends the message anyway and reads it out to him, I think. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I would, and then, of course, there's, you know, I'll just reply with urgent with something completely ridiculous. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. So uh, it's it's kind of, kind of, okay. Urgent but, sequence of inappropriate emojis. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> urgent eggplant, 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 <laughs> yeah. eggplant, eggplant. eggplant. <laughs> you peach, know. peach, 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 peach. <laughs> well, it's funny because, like, my, uh, my phone calls me Batman. Like, does it call? <laughs> it doesn't say. <laughs> Batman is driving. <laughs> we'll have to try this one day. I'll put myself in <laughs> do not disturb mode. And you see if it calls me Batman. <laughs> I set my Siri to uh, Spanish. And oh, it just yeah. speaks to me in complete Spanish. And I don't, my understanding is still not good enough that <laughs> this is something I should have done. That is now a, I don't really know what to do. That is immersive <laughs> language learning, right? Yeah. Because I ask it for you know a timer or I ask it to Google something from across the room. And it says something back in Spanish. I'm cooking or whatever. And I'm like, I don't know if you're doing what I want you to be doing. What have you begun? I didn't understand what it said back. So I'm like, are you rec- are you set my timer or what? Did you just call somebody? You know? Yeah, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I've deleted all of your contacts, Jeff. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very That's much. That's exactly what Good. I wanted you to Good. do. <laughs> exactly. Uh, well, uh, let's stay with the Google. Uh, they are reportedly working on a video game streaming service. I imagine this is kind of like the... Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Oh, um, we- we- on Live. 
Okay. Oh, oh, my, you were thinking of oh yeah, weren't you? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah that's what's in I, my head too. I funded that. I you funded, funded that. that. Yes, <laughs> I did. Did you get yours? I, no, I did not. No, oh, I no. didn't. So I funded it when I was in England at the time, and I remember coming out. I remember meeting my meeting up with my parents at some point, saying to them, "I told them all about it. I gave them the Kickstarter pitch. I was like, this thing is the, the best thing ever. I funded it. It's going to change everything. Uh, <laughs> how naive I was. That's yeah." It's been tough to admit that. What, but, but, but then, it, but didn't it really that device is now the Apple TV to a certain extent? Yeah, I think the you Apple know, TV was like out that. at the time, though. So I don't know why. But, I but it, no, but it didn't have games yet. Okay, right. It was definitely yes. like, and and you you didn't have the Nvidia Shield devices. Mm. Uh, Apple TV or Android TVs maybe weren't doing a lot of games. Fire started doing it, but they were kind of weird. Could, did I don't even think Roku had hadn't even come out with theirs with like the, the Angry Birds. controller on. By the it. way, my yeah. mom was very serious about which television the Roku with Angry Birds went on <laughs> when I was setting her up over Christmas. So I have to check in on that. I really need to check on on that. Well, on, on Live was an interesting one, wasn't it? Because they they yeah. were yeah yeah they got started. They were going okay, trying to get subscribers. I think there was at a small, really small number. Of it subscribers, was and, and and just a review on Live was basically instead of you having a high end computer there to play. I mean, PlayStation does this now uh, on a regular basis. Basically, the game is being processed and driven to you over the internet as a video feed, your your controller is responding, and it's, it's happening on a server somewhere else, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, this, and there was even, I even played with the one that was a Windows installation that had Office and some other, you know, tools, and you could just log into that. If I did that a couple of times when I needed, like, a Word document, because we would always get, like, the DocX, and mm. we didn't have the right thing for DocX because we're on Macs, and no, they wouldn't buy us Office. Right. Um, and so I'd, like, log into OnLive on my free account because you get so much for free, and it was enough to just convert one document of a script and bring it back over. Mm. I, I didn't even know. know you could do that. It, it, it was, mm-hmm. was tor- towards the end before things got weird with them. Things did get weird with them, yeah. Yes, I mean, who bought? Did Microsoft buy them? Maybe somebody bought. Them. Did they? They disappeared in a number they, of days, yeah. if I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Just quick. went from something to nothing. And that's why, because you, it was again one of those like you buy the games. Yes. And now you don't have the games. Yes. You have nothing to show for it at that point. This is why I buy my Blu-ray discs <laughs> before <laughs> distributing it, you know, and connecting them to my iTunes, and and we're good, right? So, um, but no, it's. It, Sony buys streaming game service on live only to shut it down April Sony. 2nd, 2015. <laughs> yeah, and they turned this into something, didn't they? Well, You've they did. Well, they, no, no, they bought the other one. Um, had a really weird name, uh, like a uh, uh, Kai, Kai, on Kai or something like that. Yeah. Um, and that was what was the foundation of what became, I think, PlayStation Plus, mm. where like the older games are streaming instead of downloading. Mm-hmm. Uh, and of course, well, I think, well, I think Xbox. Their subscription service actually involves downloads, so it, it, it's interesting. I mean, this is definitely something something that's in play, but is just kind of embedded with our day to days. Like there, it's not other new platforms at this point. And, and I wonder, I wonder because one of the articles I just found on TechCrunch from from back in 2015 was that OnLive had 140 cloud gaming patents. So I'm wondering how much Sony's making off of this by licensing the patent out to, to others to, mm-hmm. to use the technology. So, well, I want to show but, but back back. Oh, were, go ahead. Were, weren't we really going to talk about Android and uh, their... well, well, okay? So it's Google service, and and well, I didn't get too deep into it, did I? I it's not much other than Google's working on this thing, right? Um, which is interesting because they have the servers uh, to do something like this right and uh you know whether that becomes something like an ouya like a like an android tv streaming video game kind of thing that's like higher end stuff i I don't know because there's been so many of these platforms amazon's uh started a game studio to to support gaming on their on their fire t on their fire devices Uh, i don't know really what's come out of that either uh so uh you know it's it's kind of it's kind of interesting to see how that goes and there's still uh, this article is funny because they're still talking about streaming streaming lag and everything and i feel like that's something that a lot of these services have geforce now is a service um that will do the same thing i i didn't i think we might have talked this a while ago but i forgot that nvidia had their own thing uh that was doing doing something like this so be interesting to see and and see if this kind of um as the internet becomes more persistent, it kind of, uh, you know, takes away from that. Well, it was in um, Xbox One. They were supposed to do this. 
because the games they announced this at the beginning i don't know how much they implemented it the games that process so much on your system they were going to be able to use cloud resources but they were using cloud resources yeah to bring more processing to it so it was more powerful than just that hardware that was sitting there and yet they sold us 4k devices a couple years later all right <laughs> because you know you still need new power yeah yeah we'll just put more power there in your living room that's what you want uh, anyways, I uh, want to give a shout out real quick to our friends on the network. Comic Book Pit. I think the longest comic book podcast in Pittsburgh very easily here. Uh, well over, I think, 250 episodes. They actually have just started recording right here where we're sitting in Sorgatron Media Studios. It's been fun to to listen to them and also hide my ears when they start talking about um, the current uh, episodes of Flash that I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, so... <laughs> But no, go check it out. These guys are uh, in the, you know, they're making, writing and, and drawing comic books themselves and very uh, in touch with what's going on with that. A great uh, geeky conversations right here. Go uh, check them out at comicbookpit.com. Subscribe to them on your, all your favorite podcatchers. All right, finally, uh, this is a, uh, sorry, sorry, audio. We will describe this. And of course, there's a link over on the Awesome Cast Facebook group that you should be joined with as well. Uh, but this was something I came across. It's uh, um, uh, this artist. Uh, oh, geez, I'm not going to do well to this name. Uh, but uh, it, it's called Social Decay. And it's a graphic design project uh, that he did where uh, they, he took a lot of logos and uh, kind of made them look like old, decrepit, you know, Facebook, um, you know, old, old time signs that have been out in the middle of the desert for too long, perhaps. You know, a nice little statement to this. These are all, and these are all graphic design. These are all, you know, made. The, none of these are our actual pictures or anything. I don't think there's a lot of actual elements or anything like that. There's a Google without the G. Um, I want any of these to be my desktop. Uh, <laughs> my uh, desktop uh, 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 image as well. There's a p- nice Pinterest one on a graffiti wall. Uh, so, and we have a little bit of close-ups there. It's a match, Tinder. Uh, and even at the bottom here, there is a little bit of the clays, the digital clays they did for them, I believe. Maybe, maybe they are physical. I think about it. Let's get but physical. They're pretty cool. Uh, again, that's an article over on Behance. I don't know. There's not a lot of text with this about the article, so, uh, but it's a really cool thing that we found this week. So, uh, thank you, Jack, for joining us here on the show this week. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Of course, people can check things out at Duolingo.com, but uh, where can people uh, check out your stuff? JackMorgan.com and uh, at JCKMGM on Twitter. That's JCKMGM. That's the shortened version of my name. So. There you go. And of course, check out the awesome chat we had with him that's on the podcast feed uh, coming up uh, Thursday after the show or later. Uh, so just hanging out out there as well. Also, thanks, Katie Dudas. With the Scarehouse podcast. Yes. I think we're recording a new one tomorrow. Tomorrow. I think In that's the what's seat on. seat right here. <laughs> you want to sit over there, I'll I guess. I'll go on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go on the couch. Anyway, you just got, you just got past the um, the Valentine's Day basement. Yes. How'd that, how'd that go over Oh, there? really well. People loved it. They were, uh, it was funny because a couple of our super fans were like, I wasn't sure how you were going to take this spa theme and do what you, you know, make it creepy and weird and scary and they were very impressed. I was like, you can't underestimate so us. We can a, make anything gross. It was a gross. creepy spa. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. Some yucky things happened out oh, there. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. It was uh, fun. Is there a lot of squish? <laughs> Not so much squish. There were staples and, and things like yucky feet and, yeah, that kind of Whoa. good stuff. Um, bad smells. It was, yeah. All the good massages. stuff. massages. It was nice. All the good stuff. Kate, <laughs> Kate Dutter's on the Twitter. Yeah. Scarehouse PGH on the Twitter. Yep. I think I remember all your social yeah, media that's stuff. Good enough. And of course, John <laughs> Chachilla. Chillatech.net. Chilla on the Twitters. Um, and those signs were made in Autodesk 3DS Max and V-Ray and Photoshop. That's what, yeah, that's what so I So they aren't, they aren't, we can't go visit them. I was, I was no. hoping for a, a field trip. Like, I, like, I was pretty sure they were graphics and I looked at them and I just looked at them <laughs> now again and I'm just like, wait a minute, those look, those look, wait, they no, look no, really no, they, real. They, they look a little, little realer than, than I thought they did and, and, and it tricked me for a minute, so... Um, that's awesome. Uh, and of course, please check out everything awesomecast.com. A lot of great shows on there and, and interviews going on. Thank you, producer Missy, for keeping the chat room in check, especially that Bobby Cherry guy out there. Uh, thank you, everybody that's been um, you know, listening as well. 
uh, you know, it, it's been really cool to uh, see, you know, guys from Kansas City and, uh, you know, uh, interested in what's going on here in Pittsburgh in technology and everything. Uh, so go check it out. And of course, you can check us live here 7 p.m. Eastern time on the Facebook page for Awesome Cast. Thank you to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.